Shall we talk asymmetries? Girl job. Hello, expansion crew. What are we at? Like April, May, June, July. Four month update of FME. This weekend, I'm flying in to see Dr. Nuwaz and he's going to take out my FME. Isn't that crazy? I have not expanded at least for a month probably a little bit more. So it's been a while since I've done my last turn. You guys know about my asymmetry concerns. Pretty early on, I noticed that my left side tooth, so it's my left side. In person, it's easier to see that my left side has come slightly forward more than my right. I wanna go over why I think that's happening and how it's stumping more than just Dr. Nuaz. So I have had the question, is this Dr. Nuaz's fault? And I will say, no, there's no blame. I have gone into this knowing that there were risks, risks with having braces already on and risks with being a complex case. It's like I've just been a complex case from the beginning. And so are my complexities enough to finally warrant jaw surgery? I don't know. I really don't know, but it's definitely something I'm considering more and more as I keep fighting this darn asymmetry. So here's our plan. I'm meeting Dr. Nuaz actually this weekend. I'm flying in and he's gonna take the FME out. Remember, I am racing against the clock here. I'm getting married in November. So we are trying to have a smile that's picture worthy for November. So this is all a big factor when making these decisions together, Dr. Nuaz and I. So we're taking out the FME, reason being that I am concerned that if I were to expand anymore, which I want to, I still think I have like a good four or five millimeters to go. If I expand more at the angle that it's at, the asymmetries will become a little catastrophic visually, aesthetically. So we're gonna take it off without back turning. Dr. Nuwa said I should probably keep about 50% of my gains. So that means that I'm gonna relapse naturally by just taking the FME out. While we have this space, Dr. Nuwa is now gonna put another wire on and use this tad that I have on the left side to try and pull my right side over so that my midline comes into the center of my face. Now, a little side note, this is I think a sticking point for some of the asymmetries is my midline suture follows the asymmetry of my midline. So yeah, we're gonna try and fix the midline asymmetry as well as close the gap. We've got two months to do it. We'll see how far we go with it. And then after the wedding, he's gonna put the FME back on. And then we're gonna have to figure out the pre-planning to make sure that it's not installed tilted again. If you guys have been following me on Instagram, you will see that I have been documenting my journey. I've been taking weekly photos, as you see, of the FME as it's been opening up. What's interesting is I noticed the asymmetry happening you know, pretty early on, I told Dr. Nuas pretty early on, I was concerned that it was expanding slightly differently than I had experienced with MSE, but it, nothing was showing up on the scans, if you guys recall. I mean, it was looking symmetrical on the scans and I'll get to that. But what I couldn't figure out was why wasn't the photos that I was taking weekly showing the asymmetry? Well, it dawned on me one day because I asked my fiance to take the picture and takes the picture with that camera. I noticed that he had the camera at an angle and I was like Patrick are you centering the photo around the FME like can you not make it crooked so that you can show that the FME is slightly crooked and he was like if I don't do that I have nothing to base the photo on and I'm like okay so I didn't argue with him he's taking my photos for me but I did notice that in order to take the photos and why they were seemingly straight was because he was tilting the camera so that it became straight and this actually actually is what I think that everybody, everybody has been doing. So let's just first look at my FME installation photo. So this was taken at Dr. Nuwaz's office. This is essentially if my fiance wasn't adjusting the camera to make the FME appear straight, this is essentially what it should look like. It's slightly at an angle and Dr. Nuwaz even acknowledged it. But you'll probably see like a little bit of like an intentional sort of 
veering this way okay. just the tiniest bit. Right. So he even said that it looked like it was at a slight angle, but because the scans were showing everything was symmetrical, it should open up symmetrically, it should be fine. Of course, the FME itself opening in parallel should mm -hmm. produce a parallel split, right? I couldn't see how that was possible, but I trusted the scans. However, it was on crooked. Now I want to pull up my MSE photo. Let's do a side by side comparison. So my right side is actually going to be on the left. So if you look at this photo that says right, left, that's my MSE. The same is going to apply to the FME photo, All right? So it's a little flip. So just so you know what you're looking at. But if you look, the midline of my teeth, everything yaws over to the right. Okay, we got that. Now let's look at the suture in my MSE photo. Once you look at the suture, let's start at the bottom. If we were to draw a straight line up, you can see the MSE for the most part is on straight, but you can see the few millimeters that my midline is off to one side. And then look at the suture line. Look how it veers off when it comes to the anterior portion of my suture line. It veers off to the right following my offset midline. So my suture line isn't a straight line. It's a line that curves to the right following my asymmetrical midline. Now, when I brought this up to Dr. Nuaz, he said his experience clinically confirms this. He's seen that when this happens with the midline or when teeth are extracted and the midline shifts, the, that suture line also follows the midline. So let's go to the FME photo and let's go back to that bottom, the posterior start of my mid palatal suture line. And let's draw an arrow up. And from here, it's exactly the same as MSE. You see it? My two front teeth still off to the side, but the FME, because it was placed anteriorly, it followed the line of the suture. It followed that little crooked line. And that is how the FME was placed. Now, I'm not saying that was what was done in pre-planning. I don't think that they actually followed that suture line. However, it's interesting to note that that is the line that the FME was essentially placed on. Okay, so when I draw this line, you can see now how when I started to expand, it expanded at that angle. And so, of course, if I were to do that for five more millimeters, you would see pretty large discrepancy between my two sides. I personally think you can already see it. My fiance can see it. Most people don't see it unless, you know, I point it out. But I already started with asymmetry. So it's not that big of a deal. As long as I know that I'm getting like a 50% relapse, I'm okay with that. But you can see here what I'm up against and what I've continued to be up against now. Let's get into what I think was happening in the scans. If you manipulate the image, everything's going to appear straight. So let me show you what happens when you do that. So if you start adjusting the image, all of a sudden everything looks symmetrical. I actually look perfectly symmetrical. If you look this line from the, from the very back of the throat forward, perfectly symmetrical. You know, and you have the FME there to block the view of seeing the little curve that happens in my mid-palatal suture line. But from here, that's actually perfectly symmetrical, isn't it? So same thing with what my fiance was doing with the camera. You tilt the camera a little bit, everything looks perfectly symmetrical. But the truth is, it's not. It's slightly odd. And we can't escape that fact. So let's go to what people were doing, I believe, in my CBCT scan. So I have an image of my skull. And what I want you to look at is my cervical spine. So my last meeting with Dr. Nuaz, we were going over my symmetrically perfect CBCT findings before and after. And I noticed so this right here is the cervical spine. And I was like, I'm really curious, why aren't we aligning the rest of my skull to the cervical spine? Now, there's many answers to that. Probably many I haven't even thought of yet. But it was an interesting ask because Dr. Nuwaz humored me. Let me just show you for a second before I show that video. So let's do the same straight line that Dr. Nuwaz has, okay? So if we're looking at just the mouth, perfectly symmetrical, right down the center. Couldn't ask for anything better. Then what about the, what about the cervical spine? All right, so what happens if we align my mouth <laughs> to my neck? Then we get a little more of a representation of what's happening in my mouth. 
Now, I know there are many factors. So in this last CBCT scan, um, my head was tilted pretty far right. And it's been observed. Dr. Jafari, when I met him in person, observed that I hold my head tilted to the right. I know that I hold my head tilted to the right. And so I'm curious what would happen if we made sure that my head was not tilted in a CBCT scan, that it was completely neutral. Um, then what would happen if we line everything up to my cervical spine? I don't know, but I'd like to know. These are the most sort of easily correctable. Thing. But see, like here, look at my, is that my atlas? Is that my axis? Which C spine is that? <laughs> this is C2. So, okay, on that top left image, um, is that my C2 that's rotated or is my entire skull rotated? Uh, your C2 is rotated. Huh. How with do you know your it? Skull, with your skull aligned, how C2 do you, is rotated. How do you know my skull is not rotated? Just curious, like out oh. of curiosity. Like, how do you know I'm not doing that thing in like getting the CBCT? Well, what's... I guess that's a great that's a great question. The the golden question is what's the reference point? Like how you know straight in the skull rotator, skull straight in the neck rotator. I I think it's almost it's almost a philosophical question. <laughs> you know. Well, because if we okay, like what happens if the image aligns to the spinal process of that C two? Mm-hmm. That's what, because that's what I'm saying. Because like, and if it does, then your the our observation. I'm just gonna just for the sake of uh, demonstrating this real quick. I'm just gonna show you. Yeah, what? And my face gets all crooked in the rest of. Yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, I mean, I just don't want to mess up that superimposition we just did. But you can imagine, right? If I turn the skull i take this orange dial okay right and i press it and i hold it yeah so basically rotate that image in the screen what's going to happen this c2 is going to align and then the face is going to spin out to the left into the right can i see it or no can you count however many clicks you do so that way you can go back to it um, no, it's a it's pull and drag. But I, oh, I, I see. I see what you're saying. Um, I thought it would right. be. Right. So if we're really exaggerating it, right? Like, so now now this is aligned to C2. Yeah. Right? So now C2 straight. But this is your, this is your maxilla now. Okay. Right? You see what I'm saying? And this is more, I think, what you're, like, observing. This is exactly what I'm observing. So this is very helpful to see. Um, Because then that I'm observing that rotation. Yeah. Would you be willing to do um, just the the upper left, the bone? Oh, so you want me to go back to the superimposition thing here? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, and it's still intact, so that's good. Oh, yeah, it just, um, yeah, and actually now it has it aligned how we aligned it over there, right? Yeah. For both images or just the after? Both images, I guess, apparently, I did it for both, right, which is great. Like, this is probably more what you're, like, seeing. Yeah. Right. That is what yeah. I'm seeing. I see. Okay. Like, we didn't see how stable that spine is. Right? Yeah. For the most part. Right? Are those my condoils, the left bony things on the left and right side? These? Yeah, what are those? That's just a little bit under the condyle. Okay. Yeah, so if we scroll up. Ah. Uh, we'll get to the condyle. Aha. Uh -huh. No, this is this is helping me understand. Yeah, I mean, I feel like maybe you see a cranial osteopath or something, you know, maybe try to do some upper cervical work, and then this can maybe be 
<clears throat> some frame of reference mm -hmm. for the double jaw surgeon if you intend to get double jaw surgery to really kind of, you know, maybe think about that um, as they are situating the bones, right? Right. Because you could align the maxilla more to this as your reference, but is mm -hmm. this the reference, mm -hmm. right? I think that's the golden question. Now, I really like how the back of your skull looks here, right? You see what I'm saying? I like how your ears look here. I like how the back of your skull looks. Yeah. Now the poop of your face is now very left prominent. All right. So all considerations. I don't think that anything has been figured out per se. I'll check in with Dr. Nuaz when I see him this weekend and see if he's given any more thought to, you know, what we played around with. I don't even want to say what we discovered, but just you know, new aware awarenesses, new questions. <laughs> what it does show is that technically you can line up the CBCT scan just like I did with the photos so that everything appears symmetrical. Given that I've had two other people look at my CBCT scans and basically confirm that I'm having a great symmetrical expansion, even though in real life, I'm not. I'm not going to say it's terrible i think it's all right uh but again if i were to expand four more millimeters this way it might turn terrible so it is what it is it just is what it is but that's why i'm saying i think how do you base the standard for symmetry on a floating head cbct scan like that's my question how do you know actually what is the point of symmetry it seems easy you just line up the skull but i guess if like my skull is also slightly asymmetrical again i don't really know it's taking a lot of pondering on my part to really put it together and see if it even matters but what i know for certain is that in person it's not perfectly symmetrical like the scans are showing it's not and even my right side the scans did show that my right side is expanding a little bit more when you actually see like let's go back when you actually see the line of where i'm expanding that straight line you can see how it's more on my right side so that means a lot of my expansion has been happening on the right which is confirmed in this in the scans so we actually were able to see that <laughs> Quick rapid fire answer to your questions. Am I bummed? No, because at this point, my asymmetry does not cease to surprise me. I've gotten so used to it at this point, been fighting it for a long, long time. I'm actually quite excited to get the FME out so I can stop hissing my food out, if you know, you know, and stop slurping everywhere. And it's just going to be a nice reprieve. I'm going to have a break without the FME in. Probably going to be hard to to put it back in, to be honest. But yes, I want more expansion. I still have a crossbite on my left side. Both of my, my jaws are still about the same size. And I'm just going off of what Dr. Manueli told me that my upper jaw ideally should be about five millimeters bigger than my lower jaw. So I'm going for that. I'm still right on the precipice of increased nasal gains. One thing to note is that as I've stopped expanding for over a month, the last couple of weeks I've noticed that my nasal breathing gains have slightly diminished. So I've been mouth breathing a lot more. Of course, there's always multiple factors. We know that my turbinates always have the potential to enlarge in any space that we create. It's just an unknown, but it feels a little bit more like a relapse that's happened just as I've been sitting, mostly because I've felt my teeth shift as well. So I felt the left side open up in the beginning and my lower jaw was able to settle a little bit better and that's also gone away. So yeah, it's a big reason why I want to keep expanding the nasal breathing. Just want to fix my smile. Hopefully I can get a symmetrical midline one day. Hopefully I can get that without jaw surgery. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do I need jaw surgery? <laughs> People keep saying it. Maybe it's part of my path. I don't know. Dr. Nuaz is graciously allowing me to record my next appointment. So I'll be able to show you what it's like to take this thing out. Dr. Nuaz is officially my orthodontist now. So I'm moving forward with him with braces. Long distance orthodontist. Long distance relationships don't work, but can they work with an orthodontist? We'll find out. All right, so um, I'll see you whenever I post my FME removal. Girl job. By the way, do you like my makeup? Should I do this for my wedding? Yes. Okay, bye.